Howard Taylor from the Nike Foundation is with us to talk about the girl effect. Howard, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. So you're the Nike Foundation in London, right? Portland, Oregon. Oh, you're in Portland, Oregon. You're not in London anymore. Yeah, it's the accent that's throwing you. It is throwing <laughs> you. Uh, but you've, uh, you're uh, working with the girl effect and the Nike Foundation. That's your, that's your focus. Yeah. Uh, and that's a real specific focus, isn't it? Like you hone in on a, like 12-year-old girls, is that right? We do, yeah. There are about 250 million adolescent girls in the world living in extreme poverty. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, many actors in the development sector have seen those girls as victims of oppression. Mm -hmm. And the Nike Foundation in 2004 started out and really had the insight that those girls are actually opportunities. So we see 250 million opportunities to focus on those girls, capture girls when they're 12, and prevent the many things that happen to them, which by the time they get to 15, 16, 17, it's too late. Mm -hmm. It's too late if they've been married. It's too late if they've had children when they're still children. It's too late if they've been abused and got sexually transmitted diseases. It's too late if they drop out of school. So capturing them at 12, and stopping those things happening. Yeah. And actually, right at the end of this, we're going to provide a link to a tremendous animated video about the girl effect that uh, I think is, was done four or five years ago. Yeah. And it was just fantastic. And it really did tell that story. Um, and it was very impactful. What's been the effect of the girl effect since you started that? The early focus was getting girls on the global agenda and driving massive resources to them. Uh, and I think through the, the clock is ticking videos to which you refer and uh, events like CGI, Davos, the World Economic Forum, etc., and others, we have succeeded. And we're not alone in this. I'd really emphasize the Nike Foundation. We've done good work, but there's a crowd of people out there now who are focusing on women and girls. Mm -hmm. We're focused on, obviously, the girl, the younger part, the younger age of the spectrum. And we've collectively succeeded in getting girls onto the global agenda. So that's the first achievement. What we need to do is to maximize the time that the spotlight is on adolescent girls. To uh, The way I phrase it is take as much ground as we can for adolescent girls before the spotlight moves on. Do you, so, do you think that, that there's a risk that um, people will think, okay, well, Nike's into it, so then that means it's going to be successful and we'll worry about something else? I don't think so. I mean, we, are, we very much live by the, 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 the value that it's not our win, and therefore we, we have to work with partners. Our model is very much a catalytic model. Mm -hmm. So we bring certain things to the table, very much drawing on the Nike playbook around insights around adolescent girls, innovation, inspiration, uh, and using all of that collectively to influence other people to do more for girls. Who are some of the partners? We, are, we have a range of different partners. We get very generous funding from the Novo Foundation, uh, Jennifer and Peter Buffett. Um, they've been fantastic partners throughout this journey with us, but also from the British government, Department for International Development, the Gates Foundation, the World Bank. But we're also trying to leverage big players in the development sector. So we're trying to leverage the huge global finance uh, that people like organizations like the World Bank, the UN system, uh, aid agencies, bilateral aid agencies and others have. So we're, we're both receiving some funding, but it's not about the money that we get, it's what we can do to try and leverage, to catalyze others to do more. And that's my question, because you can have all of the money in the world, but unless there's cooperation at, at the, the ground level, it doesn't work. You guys are getting a lot of cooperation at the ground level. We are. We are now. I think that the, the word is out there. People get the difference that you can make by focusing on adolescent girls. Um, and we are now investing in a whole array of partnerships. So partnerships with big international institutions, partnerships with a few with a few governments on the ground in Africa, partnerships with the creative industry, the artists, the media, uh, partnerships with NGOs, with faith groups, etc. So, but really partnerships with a purpose. We have to be very purposeful. We're a small organization um, with a huge ambition. Mm -hmm. So we have to be pretty, pretty laser-like and pretty focused on um, who we're partnering and to what end we're partnering with them. Is there a, a typical, and I have uh, daughters myself, mm. uh, so is there a typical 12-year-old girl? I think there is. Um, and I say that because right now we have something going on that's pretty creative. As I said just now, we, we really focus on understanding adolescent girls. Um, and I know every development agency says that, and many agencies, some agencies do very well, but we really try and walk in their shoes. I spent half a day um, in Ethiopia a few months ago uh, walking alongside an adolescent girl. She just got on with her daily life, and I walked alongside her. And what that did was give me great insights into her life, um, not just the opportunities or the barriers she faces, some of the opportunities she has, but it connects that head knowledge you get just by spending a few hours with someone, but because it's real and she's a real person and, and I remember her and I have a photo on my iPhone, um, it brings it to life, so it connects the head and the heart. 
Um, so it's a sort of information head based rational thing as well as a heart passion based thing. It's those two things together. So is there a typical adolescent girl? I would say yes because we do have some adolescent girls right now, um, deprived adolescent girls from the UK who are in the field in Africa um, being sort of anthropologists if you like. Now they don't speak the language of the girls they're hanging out with. We have translators and all that sort of stuff. Um, but what's really exciting about that is adolescent girls without anything in common apart from being adolescent girls come into the, the room and they connect because they're adolescent girls. So I would say there is something there. There is a connection. And one of the things we're hoping to do uh, in, in the coming months, coming years, is to actually um, uh, off various platforms, both digital and analog, is to connect adolescent girls more. Because one of the insights we have is if you connect adolescent girls, that empowers them tremendously just by being connected, just by understanding that other people are going through what they've gone through, or uh, they're going through what they're going through, they've gone through, they can learn from their experiences, and they then get they feel more empowered to disrupt and to, and to demand more. One of the things, especially they talk about it a lot at CGI, and that is uh, girls being forced to marry very mm. young. And in fact, that's something that's in, in the Grow Effect video as well. The clock is ticking yeah. for you. Um, are you finding that culturally you have that barrier inside a family uh, as you work with 12 year old girls? There are cultural barriers. There are religious barriers. There are also economic and sometimes even political barriers. And I think that what we're finding is having the conversation in the right way with the right groups of people. Um, and there's been tremendous success of a program called the Bahani Hawan program in uh, Amhara region of Ethiopia, mm -hmm. where we were just one of an array of partners, Population Council, the UN, and, and others were involved in that program, which in the course of just a few years has managed to make early, early marriage has gone from being something that's happened for, for centuries, I guess, um, to now being something which is frowned upon in that community. But mm -hmm. that's been quite a high-touch investment of getting alongside community leaders, uh, religious leaders, fathers, and men who are entering that age range when they would be looking for a young bride. Um, and with quite just ex talking to them and understanding not just why this happens, but talking to them about a different future for girls. So in just the course of a few years, we've managed, to, we, the group who've been working on that have managed to reposition girls in that community. And what's really exciting about that, and this is where the scale influence point comes in, um, we've now, um, through the partnership with the UK Department for International Development, that program's now being taken to scale to about 220,000 girls in that region. Now what's what's really exciting, if we can really get to the insights from that, what's really worked, what was it that really happened there, that mm -hmm. really worked, and if we can extract those and amplify those to, to the wider world in a way that contextually can be contextually uh, applied, that would be really exciting. So when are you going to know that? Pretty soon. I mean, one of the things we're trying to do is learn as we go. Um, so, uh, you know, keeping a close eye on what's actually happening on the ground, what is it? And, and it's very interesting. The conversations I've been at uh, in, in CGI this year, um, it's, it, th there's a level of development where people are talking at, at some level of generality. Mm -hmm. This is the problem. This is the problem. These are the issues. Um, and these are some of the solutions. But I think in the way that large consumer companies, this is my personal take on this, the way that large consumer companies now tailor products for individuals, mm -hmm. um, that's almost the way I think the development interventions need to go. Now, you can't tailor development interventions, let's say, for every single girl, mm -hmm. but possibly her family, certainly her community, certainly her town, and maybe the district or the region. Um, and the reason I say that is because I think we have the, the, uh, the ability now with you know, the digital the world we live in particularly, to very quickly extract what's working um, and very quickly package that in a way that can be a toolkit that can equip other people who are taking decisions in other parts of the same country uh, or the same continent. So it, it really doesn't matter then if it's in Africa or Asia or North America, South America, you're able to, uh, to get to the specific interest of that group of 12-year-old girls. That's our ambition, yeah. A year from now, can you come back uh, right here and tell us how, you, how you're doing? I'd love to. Thank you very much, Howard. Thank you.